Hello, Safik. Uh, so let's start our session. And uh, at the beginning, I would like to ask you, have you been able to complete the uh, homework that we discussed yesterday? Yeah, I completed all of them. All of them? OK, great. So any issue you are facing with any of the programs? Is it all good or shall I go ahead? I'm facing want to problem number three. Okay, okay. Can I, will you be able to share your screen so that I can see that then and there? Yeah. What was that? The scenario. One is to take input, one is to show the sum of the numbers, right? Okay. Okay, uh, can you please scroll it up? Please scroll, scroll it up. So static in the X, Y, and Z. Okay. Okay, why they are static? Okay, first of all, copy all these. Start, start with Start with, start with public static void input, public static void input, start with this and copy everything till the end. Okay, uh, they removed everything, why? Okay, press the keys, control Z. Control Z. Okay. Now click anywhere. Please click anywhere. Okay. Now start copying where right now I can see the cursor where it is before the public static void input. Copy everything after it. Okay. Cut it. Please control X. Cut it. I said to cut it, okay, so, okay, okay, now paste it where it says static and X, Y, Z, after that paste everything, hit enter, hit enter and paste everything, okay, scroll it up, okay, now it says, scroll it up, yeah, okay, so you have the methods here, and then you are satvik dot next end. Okay, it's better not to use the name in the place of variables. For this program, it is fine. Okay, but it is uh, you know advisable that we should never use any name, right? We should use some you know well like it's a variable, right? But that is fine as long as the program is working. Okay, enter your first number, enter your second number. Okay, scroll it down. Satvik, please scroll it down. And then in Z you have X, Y, Z. Okay, now it says in Z. It says in Z, please remove it. Remove in Z. Yes. Scroll it down. Please scroll it down. Okay, where it says, where it says, uh, there, uh, 
put one more curly braces you need to close one more curly braces okay try to run your program now okay into the first number second number hit enter hit enter nothing I happening yeah. Okay. Scroll it up now in the program. Nothing is happening because you are not accessing the display. You also need to access display in the main method. Scroll it down please. At the bottom and say display. Okay run this program now okay got it Satvik we got it thank you you got it okay so uh, let me be the presenter now please make me the presenter can you do that Okay, so today we are going to discuss about inheritance in core Java, right? What is inheritance? So inheritance is a way so that you will not be, uh, so that you uh, you will not be asked to write a piece of code again and again, right? It's a mechanism which will allow you in which one object will acquire all the properties and behavior of the parent object. So there are, so we as children, like you or me as a children, of our parents we acquire most of the properties of them, like some features, some facial features, right, or sometimes the way we walk, do things, so it you know resembles our parents so some of the properties we acquire from our parents so that is called inheriting the properties from our parents the same thing happens in, in inheritance in Java like it will acquire the child classes will acquire the properties of its base classes okay and it will acquiring means it will acquire the behavior okay the idea behind the inheritance is that you can create new classes that are built upon the existing classes. So you will be able to create classes built upon the existing classes. Okay. When you inherit from your existing classes, you can reuse method and fields of your parent class. So you have methods and fields, you have methods and data members in your parent class, you can inherit them in your child class. When you follow the inheritance okay so there are two benefits of inheritance one is method overriding you can override the methods we will see how to do the method overriding and the other thing that you can do is code reusability it means you can reuse the code how do so there are two things method overriding and code reusability so what is the syntax of the syntax of inheritance you will say class subclass name the name of the subclass then you will say extends extends superclass or the parent class name 
So the parent class is also called the super class. Then it's methods and the data members. Extend is a keyword that indicates you are making a new class that is deriving from the existing class, from the parent class. Okay. So far clear? So far clear? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, so for an example, we have something like uh, let's say we have a parent class class student okay. the student has few properties like int uh, number and then it has a uh, string name right. okay. then I am closing it here so this is one of the classes, this is a public class, okay, I'm closing it here, then I'm creating other class, that is public, student test, since student so it's extending this class when it's extending this class it means it can use the roll number and the name so without defining I have a constructor here like constructor will be public student test And rule number is start rule number equals to one two three this dot name equals to as big right big void display out the print line the name and the rule number of the student class Name plus number then you have the main part here public static void main and then us uh, you'll have to create an instance so you will say you will be creating an object for the student test not for the super class you will be creating the instance for uh, subclass object equals to new obj dot display so even if these two are the roll number and name they belong to the student the student class and not to the student test but we are extending the student test is extending the student super class that's why we can use them here directly without 
clearing in, in this class, right? And then we are using it here. So all you, what you need to understand is just a few lines, like how we have extended it, extended the support of super class, and how we are using it here. This is a constructor that we discussed in our previous class yesterday, right? I'll just put another T here because I have I have many classes with the name student maybe I'm sure. Student, we don't need the public static void. I just say finish student okay, then I will create another one that's student Has public static void mean? I think you could drop the public class. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Good catch. So the moment I access it, it will display the name and the row number. So this is how the inheritance works. This is how the inheritance works. So this was, 
so there is single inheritance this is called single inheritance where you have this one class inheriting the features that is called single inheritance okay you can also see where you have multiple multi uh, you have multiple classes that is called multi level inheritance so there are two uh, multi level and multiple so multiple inheritance is not supported but multi level inheritance is supported in java okay we will see how this works but before that i would like to know uh, if you have any question on this this example any question on this no okay good so let's say we have uh let me take some other example let's say we have uh, i just want to make you understand the multi level inheritance now you have a class animal okay and you have something so any animal they eat something right so we have a method eat and we will say animal animal eat something by anything here okay and then we are closing our class here then we have another class dog is extending the animal class that we just did in our previous example we extended we have another class that is extending the animal okay and it says so it is a dog we will say void and then we have bark void bark Let's say box bar. I am closing this class as well. We have one more class that is class dog beef, and it is extending. extending the dog class that we just created it is extending the dog class okay. this class is extending the animal class this class is extending the dog class okay so extend dog and then it has a method that is void brief i will say is a dog when we are discussing about the weeds of the dogs now since we have here the dog class is extending the animal class 
it means dog class is accessing the features of the parent class it means it can access this one eat right dog has access to the eat method of the parent class to inheritance dog breed has access to the dog class this dog class has this one method bark so it means it has access to the bark bark method and also it has access to the eat method why because dog has also access to the eat method that is why dog breed has access to bark and eat both understandable or not now okay so now i will ask you if dog is extending the animal method animal class is it inheriting something what is it inheriting the dog class from animal the method e okay and the dog breed class is accessing the dog dog class so what is it inheriting uh the void e and i mean the method e and the method bark okay that's what i said so you got it right right got it yeah you go you got it now we will have another class test animal we will have another class test animal and then we will have here we have public static void main string arc and then so since this has the dog breed has access to both the previous parent classes so we will be creating an object for this one dog breed not for dog and the animal we will directly create object for dog breed and it will in that in this way we will have access to the eat and bark both the methods of the parent classes all right uh how you you didn't extend the test animal for a dog breed sorry you didn't extend the test animal for dog breed ha huh? mm -hmm. okay yeah good question okay so what we are doing is we are just these are the public right they are the public classes what you can do you can also just keep it here like in the class and in the, let's do one thing let's keep the keep, keep this one in this in the dog breed okay and in the dog breed we will access it is it all right now Yeah. Okay. Good. So we are accessing your breed. We are accessing your eat. We are accessing your bark. Okay. So let's try to put it. In the eclipse let's see so what is that we need to create we will need to create the dog breed
So it is a stray dog. Animal eats something, dogs bark. Okay, so this is how the multi-level inheritance works. This is multi-level inheritance. Got it? Then we have one more type of inheritance. That is not type, actually. You can say there is one more way by in which you can write programs in inheritance. Okay, for an example, we had here animal, right? So we just discuss about dogs. We discuss about dogs. We can have one more class here that is cat. Okay, so we can say. We can say class cat class cat which is extending. So cats cats will also eat something and then they, they will you know speak the dogs bark and uh, the uh, I think the cats mew right so cats will also extend the animal they belong to the animal category cats right and then we will say void I think um, not sure about the spelling of new and then we will say system dot out dot print ln No. Right. So now in our this class where we are extending it, I'm just going to modify this a little. Okay. You you got this one now? Dog dog breed extends dog. It is the previous example. Can I modify it a little? Adwit, you there? Uh, yeah, you can modify it. Okay, well, I think I cannot because we, uh, this is the name of our class, Dog Speed. Dog Speed, I can modify this one here. Like I will just remove this that extends talk. Okay. Okay, so Let me just copy all this. Till it, till the cat extends, I'm just copying everything. I'll create one more class just to keep it clean. That's my inheritance example. I don't know what is the number. And I'm going to add the other classes here. Okay, I have animal, I have I have dog extends animal, I have cat extends animal, and then I have this inheritance example here. So in this I will just create cat C. I'm creating the object for cat, not for dog. Cat C equals to new cat and I will say c dot new c dot e
let's access this. So cats, new animal, eat something, right? It is not saying. It is not saying anything about bark, right? You, we can also create one more here. Dog D equals to new dog. Change to dog. Change to dog. So D dot dog. Cats mew, dogs bark, animal eat something. Okay, this is how, this is called the hierarchical, hierarchical inheritance. So we have discussed about the inheritance and any any questions so far on this? How do you assign cat C dog D? Okay. Can you please elaborate a little more about your question so that I'll be able to understand it? If your question is simple, in a simple way, C is your letter, cat C dog D, I can put anything. I'm just creating objects for different classes. So oh, okay. Yeah. I... Now, now I get it. Now I get it. Okay. Good. So this was about the inheritance. Okay. Now, we will talk about overloading. Okay. Method overloading. I think we have uh, already discussed, right, the method overloading, you remember? Uh, okay, we discussed about the constructor overloading, right, yesterday, you remember? Remember, remember that? We discussed yesterday about the constructor overloading. Yeah. Okay, now we will discuss about, okay, what are these, can you tell me uh, Satvik, what are these, the bark, what do you say, bark, in programming terms, what do you call it? A method's name? A method's name, correct. So now, we are going to talk about method overloading. We are going to talk about, I will write another class here. Method overloading. Okay. It has two classes. Let's say it has it X, first of all, I will just say there are few variables in Z. And then it has uh, add methods, void add. It has int p int q, int q, int r, and then I will say this dot, or let's say x equals to p, y equals to q, z equals to r. So 
in my add one. Okay. I will say system dot out dot print Helen for method add one. The sum is plus x plus y plus z. So my add one. And I will say void add two. I have int l int m int L N N right. I will say x equals to L y equals to M N equals to sorry z equals to N again I will write the same thing here type the same thing here for add 2 so this is my method overloading and yesterday we discussed about constructor overloading void uh, add 3 we have int u and int v x equals to u, y equals to v. I will say for add 3, my sum is x and y, x plus y. Now we will create them. We will access them by the objects to so method overloading m equals to new method overloading okay then I have uh, m dot add one then need three values for pqr I will say seven eight Nine. M dot add two. I will say again it needs three values. Eight. Four. Five. M dot add three. Needs two values. Five. And five. So for method add 1, the sum is 24, add 1, 7, 8, 15, 15, 9, 24, for add 2, 8, 4, 12, 5, 17, for add 2, it is 17, and for add 3, 5, and 5, 10, okay. So we have different methods, add 1, add 2, and add 3, in constructor overloading, the name of the methods were same but in method overloading we are using methods that's why we have different methods with the different number of parameters okay so this is how the method overloading works so if a class has multiple methods having same name but different in parameters this is known as method overloading okay so it can have same name or it can have different name method if it has same name that will be if, uh, if, uh, uh, if, it, if it's the same name that will be your that's going to be constructor overloading method overloading is when you have different names and number of attributes may differ 
that's the method overloading you can change the number of parameters you can change the type of the parameters like for this i have used int p int q and int r i can say string string p then i'll have to make the appropriate adjustment in the variables and then i have to pass some different value here if i have a string Okay, so this is method overloading. Any question on this? No. Cool. So we'll discuss about the method overloading. Okay, now we will talk about method overriding. Okay. this is the part of okay what is in the uh, we just discuss about the inheritance right now we are discussing about polymorphism okay polymorphism what is polymorphism so when you have poly means many when we have polymorphism it means many forms method overloading one method has many forms when you are constructor overloading overloading or method overloading you can keep the same name for all the methods and you can change the number and data type data type of parameters or the arguments they are also called arguments so this is called this is a part of this is a part of polymorphism the polymorphism it means that is poly means many and morph morphism equals to forms okay so many forms of a method has many forms right and the polymorphism so this is the concept the overloading is the concept of polymorphism uh, yeah and polymorphism and inheritance are the concept of object oriented programming language which is java right so if somebody asks you uh, illustrate some of the features of object oriented programming language then we will say inheritance polymorphism we will discuss more like abstraction encapsulation right now we will discuss about method overriding in java okay method overriding we just discuss about method overloading we will now discuss about the method overriding what is method overriding it's sub class we discuss about the sub class and the parent class right or you can say parent class child class base class sub class both are the same thing so if the child class has the same method as declared in the parent class it is known as method overriding okay so what do we do in that case in method overriding we just we can just define it so the method is already declared in the base class right so for example the dogs bark or the i said void eat you i said void eat i can once again use the same thing here i can once again i can go here and in my animal class 
I mean, sorry, in my dog class, I can use it again. Okay. But I can modify this a little bit. So the animals eat, and what does a dog eat? Dogs are non-vegetarian. Dogs are non-vegetarian. It means we are using the same method that it, uh, its parent has. Its parent has a method eat, and we are changing the definition. In our parent class, we said animal eat something or animals eat something. Now in our child class, we are defining it further. The same method is going to be used and we are defining it in some other way. That dogs, dogs belong to the animal category. We have already extended the animal. It means they eat. They eat things. But what do they eat? They eat non-vegetarian food. Got it? Yeah. This this concept is called overriding. I'll I'll go here in our dog breed class and I'll list it there. Thus I need a little modification. So I said here. I will go here. I have bath. I will have another thing here. That is eat. Okay. Class animal. Why it has errors? Why it has errors? So there is something wrong or we will need, I need to write a complete different code. Let me see. Okay, we are using it here as well. So, yeah, let me just go to this program. Okay, so we have animal eat and dogs bark. So I'm testing it here. That one. Let's eat. So the dogs eat the non-vegetarian food. And I'm removing this one, the cat. I'll have to remove the cat example. I'll have to remove the cat's mew and cat's seed. We are just concentrating on bark and d dot e. Okay. Let's I, I'll explain it to you a little more. Then. So dogs bark and the dogs are okay, so it has some grammatical mistakes. So dogs eat non-vegetarian food. Okay. So what we have done here, animal has a method eat. Okay. That says animal 
eat something dog has again the same method void eat but we have redefined it dogs eat non vegetarian food and then we are accessing eat so it is not displaying the eat of parent class it is displaying the eat of child class so this is called we are overriding that method in our child class this is called method overriding got it satvik yeah okay satvik so this is all for today are you available tomorrow for the class tomorrow are you available satvik can you no. hear me I'm not available tomorrow. Okay, I'm not available. Okay. Okay, then uh, probably maybe on Monday, right? Okay. Okay, okay. If you are available tomorrow or day after, in any case, then you can inform the admin and he will try to arrange the classes. See. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. practice okay uh, sakti before you leave i just want to tell you that there are so many concepts and i find you um, that you need to practice more okay you need to practice more so you need to write more programs you need to code more then uh, you will benefit this training session tomorrow okay see i'm sorry Uh, if we have class tomorrow, will it be at ten or ten thirty? Okay, that you can inform. I don't have any issues. Like, uh, uh, yeah, uh, today it will be seven thirty IST. I think that is ten o'clock, ten o'clock Eastern time. If you want to change it, I can make it, uh, you know, ten thirty. No, ten is fine. Ten is fine. Okay. so first of all you need to inform the admin about it that i you want to take class okay so inform the admin about this write an email to him okay 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 then see you bye